Hello, everybody. How are we doing today? Uh, my name is Miss Lindsay, and we're going to read a book and make some art together. And I'm practicing my Spanish, so let me try that in Spanish. Let's see. Uh, Hola a todos. ¿Cómo estás hoy? Mi nombre es Señorita Lindsay. Leemos un libro y creemos hasta junto. Hopefully I pronounced that all correctly. Uh, but anyway, yeah, really exciting today. We're going to read this book together. It's called Cactus Hotel. And then we're going to do an art project that's kind of based on printmaking and drawing, uh, just like we see in the book. All right, so let me go ahead and switch to my desktop camera. Just take a second. All right, so hopefully everyone can see my desktop camera here. Uh, so this is the book called Cactus Hotel. And this book is by Bebra Z Kyberson. Uh, and the illustrations by, by Megan Lloyd. So everything you see, these are all drawn. It's all illustration that she uh, used here for this book. Um, and part of what we want to highlight is that a lot of our books, especially science, social studies, are very heavily including arts, right? Uh, a lot of them they use illustrators because we don't have, you know, uh, pictures of all these animals and creatures in the perfect setting. We know they live in these environments, um, but that doesn't mean someone's going to be able to photograph them, you know, very well. In these. So we really do rely heavily on artists as illustrators to show us kind of how our world works. And this is, book is a perfect example, and it's kind of a fun topic, right? to kind of picture the cactus as this home or hotel for all these creatures. Let's go ahead and read the book. So Cactus Hotel, our inside title page. And again, we can see beautiful oranges and yellows, lots of blues and purples. And then you've got these nice green tones for cacti. On a hot, dry day in the desert, a bright red fruit falls from a tall saguaro cactus. Clop! It splits apart on the sandy floor. 2,000 black seeds glisten in the sunlight. So all these little specks are cactus seeds, seeds from this, this, uh, the saguaro cactus. When the air cools in the evening, an old pack rat comes out and eats the juicy fruit. Then he skitters across the sand, a seed left clinging to his whiskers, falls off under a palo verde tree. So he's eating it, but he's knocking some of the seeds off. As he runs away, they stick to him and they get left as he runs. It is a good place for the seed to drop. A spotted ground squirrel looking for something to eat does not see it. A house finch chirping high in, in the Palo Verde does not see it. And so these little seeds, a bird, here, right, he missed it. The little squirrel didn't see it. After many dry days, a heavy rain falls on the desert. Soon, a young cactus sprouts up from the ground. So just like most plants, it needs water to get the seed activated. Slowly, slowly, the seedling grows. The Palo Verde protects it from the hot summer sun and cold winter nights. After 10 years, the cactus is only four inches high. It is just big enough for desert ants to climb on its spiny sides. So it took 10 years for it to just grow four inches. After the rainstorm, when the desert blooms, the, blooms with color, the cactus pulls in water from its long roots and looks fat. A young pack rat stops to drink the water that drips off the tree. Then she scurries off looking for a dry place to make a nest. All right, so we can see down here under the ground, it really spreads its roots out far. When there is no rain, the cactus uses up the water it has stored inside and looks thin. The Palo Verde loses its tiny leaves, but there is always some shade for the cactus below. After 25 years, the cactus is two feet tall. 
a jackrabbit pulls off beside it and gnaws on the green pulp. But when a coyote moves in the distance, the jackrabbit disappears into a nearby hole. So it took 25 years for it to grow two feet tall. That's crazy. After 50 years, the cactus stands 10 feet tall and looks straight and strong beside the old Palo Verde. For the very first time, brilliant white flower, white and yellow flowers appear at the top of the cactus. Every spring from now on, the flowers will open for one night only and then close in the heat of the day. They beckon like a welcoming signal across the desert. At different times of the day and night, birds, bees, and bats come for the next finally got flowers at the top. And look how big it is. Now it's 10 feet tall. It's bigger than, taller than the tree. The flowers dry up, and after a month, the bright red fruit filled with black seeds is ripe and ready. A gilla woodpecker comes to eat. He looks around the cactus and decides to stay. So the flower, these were the flowers, but they're done. And what's left are the fruit that has those seeds. He has found the perfect place in the desert to begin a new hotel. All right, so here he is. The woodpecker goes right to work. And the only tool he uses is his long, hard beak. He bores into the flesh of the cactus. Tap, tap, tap. He digs deep inside to make a space that is comfortable and roomy. So he's poking a hole, digging a hole out. And this is what it'll look like once he has it all dug out. Just enough space for him to make a nest or her. The cactus is not harmed. It forms a tough scab all around the hole to protect itself from drying out. The woodpecker gets a weatherproof nest that is shady on hot days and warm and insulated on frosty nights. And the cactus gets something in return. The woodpecker likes to eat the insects that can bring disease to the cactus. So they have a, a relationship, right? The cactus keeps it nice and safe from the weather, but the bird eats all the bugs that could harm the cactus. After 60 years, the Cactus Hotel is 18 feet tall. To add more space, it begins to grow an arm. A woodpecker has a new hole in the trunk further up. A white-winged dove makes a nest on the arm. And down below, an old hole is discovered by an elf owl. The birds feel safe living high up in a prickly plant where nothing can reach them. So we've got woodpecker here, his old home though, now this little elf owl is going to use it, and it's got an arm. All around the desert, there are holes of every size for ants and mice, lizards and snakes, rabbits and foxes. After 150 years, there are holes of every size in the cactus too. The giant plant is fi has finally stopped growing. It is 50 feet tall with seven long branches. It weighs eight tons, about as much as five automobiles, right? So this, is, this weighs as much as five cars. It's taller than probably a lot of uh, homes. This is a huge cactus. And down below, we can see how other animals in the desert, right? We've got coyotes, snakes, rabbits, chipmunks, lizards, more snakes and rats, and the birds, how they all live in this landscape. Everybody wants to live in the cactus hotel. Birds lay eggs and pack rats raise their young. Even insects and bats live there. Right, got lots of bird nests, insects, right? Even some of the, the little mice, the rats. There's a nest with some eggs. When one animal moves out, another moves in. And every spring they come for a special treat of nectar and juicy red fruit. And so every spring, it has the flowers that bloom. And then when they're done blooming, they'll turn into the fruit. Finally, after 200 years, the old cactus sways in a gust of wind 
and falls with a thud to the sandy floor. Its great thorny arms crumble in the crash. It seems a little sad. It did like 200 years old, it was an old, old plant. The creatures that live up high must find other homes, but those that prefer to live down low move right in. A millipede, a scorpion, and many ants and termites quickly find homes in the toppled hotel. So even though it's not alive anymore, it fell over, uh, it has new residents, right? New animals move in, right? Scorpions, snakes, lizards, ants. There's the millipede right over here. After many months, all the remains are the wooden ribs that supported the cactus while it stood so tall. A collared lizard dashed up over the rock, over the top, looking for insects. A ground snake huddled in the shade below. This kind of the, the husk of the cactus. And all around there is a forest of cacti, slowly, slowly growing in the desert. Through hot and cold, wet and dry, some will survive long enough to become other cactus hotels. You can see they all over the place. And they got some fun, different arms, and branches. All right, so that's our book for today. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna do an art project that's kind of mixing printmaking with drawing in it. So let me switch to my paper. So I have paper and I've already sketched out lightly um, an outline for the, the background of my, my uh, cactus landscape. So I did some mountains and this is all inspired by the book. Um, I kind of saw that last page where you had that field of just lots of um, cacti and I, I'm, I'm not following that line exactly. I'm just using it as a guide. So I'm going to put in my background. Right, these are all the mountains and hills that were back there. And I'll, I'll color all that last. I'm going to. I want to do the cactus first. So to do the cactus, I thought it'd be real fun if we do a printmaking technique, but we're going to use our fingers. And I'm going to use my washable. Make sure they're washable if you're going to do the printmaking part of this. Washable markers. And I think that the markers that we gave you are also washable. Um, so you should be able to do this with the marker set that you got from school that Papa sent you. So I'm going to make a couple cactus here. I'm, I'm going to make I don't know, maybe three or four. And, and you can make some. And let me flip to this page in the book. Uh, we saw the one cactus that was um, you have our main cactus, but there was also, you saw there's cactus like this. So there's different type of cactus. So you don't have to just do one, you can do other types. So I'm gonna start off with this color green and I'm gonna use my thumb. I'm gonna take the mark, I'm gonna paint it onto my thumb, draw it right on there, just the, just the tip of my thumb. And again, this is washable marker, so it'll come off. And I'm just gonna push it onto the paper. And my thumbprint is kind of cool. So it leaves my thumbprint, but it's got ridges, it's got lines, it has all that would almost look like the, the little spikes. And I'm gonna make another one. So I'm going to use my thumb again, just color over it and push. And you get these kind of fun cacti structures. So let me do one more going up. And I'm going to do some arms. I'm just going to use my, my pointer finger, though. It's a little bit uh, thinner than my thumb. Oh, put my friend on there, do a cup, do an, and I want to do one more arm that's coming off down here. Right, so there's my first cactus at my marker. And, I, and I'm going to do another one. See, and this one um, is, a, is a kind of darker green. I'm actually gonna put make this one as though it fell. All right, so this is an old cactus that had fallen. Where it was standing up. 
as we saw in that last picture, right, that um, these fields of cactus, yeah. an arm, and I tried to do it so it was a little bit broken off. So there's one of the cactus that fell. And again, I used kind of a darker um, green there. Let me get, here's another color green. So I'm going to do um, one of the cactus that we saw that has like all the little branches coming out. Let's do a couple big. I am turning my paper. It is easier to turn my paper sometimes than my whole, my hand. So don't be afraid to, to turn your paper around. So there's some big ones. Let's do some little ones. I'm just coloring in little parts of my finger. I'm going to mix in my other color just so that you can see different parts of it. It's a little bright on my camera here, so you might not be seeing all the colors, but you can definitely tell I'm adding parts in. Okay, so there's a little cactus cluster. And let's see, let's pick one more. I've got, I, I do have a nice, that my markers, I have a bunch of different greens, but you can, and let me show. So I'm going to take, this is the green I used here, but if I want to change the color up, I can do that color, and then I'm going to take some brown, and I can go over it with some brown too, and then you'll get a mix. So you can use all the colors you have in your set too, and you can also mix. So there's my green, I'm just going to mix in a little brown. And then it's, it's a bit darker than that. So you can play around with your, your colors too. Again, just making my colors there. Oops, I forgot to put brown in. That's all right. That one, I'm gonna make this one pretty tall. There we go. Give it a bunch of arms. I keep moving my hand off. And again, you can you can keep using you know lots of different fingers here. You don't have to just use your thumb and and a pointer finger. I just using those because they were easy enough. And it's a little hard to get my thumb, so I'm going to turn my paper. And I'm, here, I'm gonna make this one even bigger. I'm gonna make it even taller. There we go. All right, because I'm saying, I mean, the one that we had, it was, it was like 18 feet tall in our story by the time it was full grown. Okay, so I've got my cacti done. And we saw that they got, they got flowers on top. Now you do not need to stick with just the white and, and and red colors. Oh, I'm going to do red. Um, and I'm going to use just the tip of my pointer, even though it's got green on it, it's fine. Um, so this one's got the fruit on the top. So I'm going to put some red in, right, to be like the fruit that, that uh, it gets. Okay, let me get a little creative with the other ones. Um, let's, see, let's do some some bright blue, and yeah, just keep using my pointer finger. Put some blue for this one, and even though that's not quite accurate, uh, you know this is your your piece, so you can do whatever you colors you like. Um, I I like having a little extra color. And then I'm going to do some bright orange, yellowy, kind of mixing with all the colors here over here. Not on all of them, but just some of the bigger ones. There we go. All right, so I've got, um, and this one doesn't get any because it's dead, right? 
So that's the base of it, right? So you can do the prints. Now you can also hand draw these. If you don't have markers or if you don't, if your parents say no, don't, don't color on your fingers um, or you don't have washable markers, then you can take your pencil and you can sketch these. So uh, I have these four that I showed with the fingerprints, but you could also sketch these out, right? So just do like a round top down to the base and then you can give it some arms right so you could definitely um sketch these out too you don't have to and draw them so i'll just show this one shade them in and i can still do you know the red fruit on top. So either way, you can do either either ones for your desert landscape with your cactus. Um, and then we have to put in a little bit more details here for the ground. Um, so we saw, so in the book, you know, they're not floating. So I'm just going to use my marker and just put little kind of marks where these guys are in the ground. Right, just to show, and this one was here. And this one's probably got some, some grass that's coming up. And let me, uh, right, so this dry desert grasses might be popping up around it. So I'm gonna, right, and so it's kind of got this husky, look to it. So I'm even going to draw some through it. Just some lines, right? And it makes it look that woody look that we saw in the picture when it fell. The other thing you can add is we saw that there were lots of animals, right? Uh, so I'm going to, I'm going to draw a snake here by my cacti that fell. And I'm, it's going to be a couple colors, but I'm going to start with this um, kind of orangish yellow color. And I'm going to add in the darker colors because it it was a snake that had other colors. But you want to start with the lightest color first, so then you can just draw the darker colors over it. Had a black base, and then black next to the color. And there's my snake. Right, okay. And I can draw, I'm going to do a, a, a rabbit a hair over here. So let's draw, there's the head, part of the body, legs. There's the ears. It's just a, a quick sketch. Uh, let's see, I'm going to make him brown, like tan and brown. So there's my little jackrabbit. They do have a little tail. It's not a fluffy, fluffy white tail like you usually see. There's my little eye. And his little nose. So just a quick little rabbit. And also, I'm going to put a bird. Uh, I'm going to put a bird on top of this cactus over here. Um, and I really like there was that real bright orange bird. Uh, but let me, um, the, the woodpecker, right? That one woodpecker was. So there's my bird's kind of shape, right? Again, just simple circles. And then I'm just going to fill them in. It's got a pretty tail. And you can draw like the wings coming off a little bit, right? So there's some wings coming off. And then it had like black, had a black beak. So I'm just going to draw a little beak. There's its eye. And it just had some black. Kind of feathers to go in. So there's my bird. All right, and I'm going to add in a little bit more grasses around, and I'm just doing some lines that go up. Right, all around the base. 
And once you have that done, so that's pretty much my my foreground, right? The stuff I want in the front of my my paint my picture. Uh, and then I'm just going to do the background. And for that, um, this is where and I think we, we also gave you colored pencils, I believe, or if you have colored pencils, this would be a great time where you could switch because colored pencils are a little bit softer. So I have some colored pencils here. Uh, and these are nice because you can um, kind of you know determine what the colors are a little softer. So I'm just going to I'm going to color in part of my mountains first here. Just the camera angle. There we go. Color my mountains, and I'm going to you know kind of mix up the colors. I'm going to start going over. Them. And the great thing is because, you know, it's marker over top. I can just go right over top of the, the marker because the color pencil is so light. It's not going to, you know, hide any of the marker. So that's why if you're doing markers and, and color pencils, you want to do the marker first, marker first. And this isn't the only color I'm adding. I'm going to add in some, you saw those nice oranges and uh, yellows in the sand as well, in this kind of desert sand. This is just the first color. That's why I'm kind of going over everything lightly. And I got some, let's see, what color is this? So some golden yellow, perfect, okay. I'm gonna go right over the top. And just add that in. Oops. And don't worry, I'll go back to the mountains. I just wanted to do this first. And if you notice too, I'm holding my, my colored pencil you know, at an angle. So it's real close to my paper. I'm not doing it straight up and down. That's where you get real dark lines. But if you want real light lines, you want to put it so it's on its side. And you'll get lighter colors. And let's do a little bit of um, orange too. There we go. Yeah, get some nice orange in there. Now you could also draw in some trees. So we saw, so remember our, our cactus in the story, um, that cactus grew in where a tree was, right? So it grew up like basically through a little tree. So you could definitely add in some other landscape features. Here. You could put in some rocks in here. Um, but I mean, I can, I can add in you know, some rocks right in here right now. Let's put in the gray rock. All right, so you can definitely add in some features. If you want to, you don't have to leave it just pretty blank. Uh, the mountains in the store, they were they were like purples and blues. So I'm going to do that too. Um, and again, real light. And do the whole all this purple. Even over this, I'll go over this part too. First color, got a purple color, and then we're going to add in some. So we got this kind of slate gray blue color. I'm going to add in, but you could do again purple and blue. This is the blue I'm using that I have. Um, now, if you do this and your purple and blue are really bright, I want to show you what you can do to help lighten them up a little bit. Right, so if they're too dark, you can take the white and you can go over it with white, and I might need to sharpen this, um, and it'll start, it'll blur it and it'll lighten it up a little bit, right? So you can do that, you can go over it with the, with the white. And that'll help blend in some of the colors. 
Okay. And then the last part would be to do my sky. And I'm going to take my, I've got this sky blue color. Uh, I'm going to do the same technique, real light. And I'm also going to put in some clouds. So I'm going to leave some, some blank open spaces. That would be clouds. And then fill in all the way to my mountains. I said, don't be afraid to turn your paper. I'm trying to leave mine flat just so you know people can see what I'm doing. And there is my cactus landscape. Right, and again, using a little bit of a printmaking technique. Uh, like I said, you don't have to do the printmaking, you can just draw them. Uh, it's up to you. And again, don't be afraid to explore the shapes of the cacti, right? There's lots of different shapes that they could do. Um, Oh, you know what I'm gonna add? I'm gonna add one more cactus and do a little. Remember how it started off? It was only it was so little when it was like a baby. Right? It just had one little mark, and that's nice too. Yeah, using the marker, you can go over um, the the space too. Uh, the marker, even though you do use colored pencil, the marker will go over it. All right, so there's our little. Cactus. Oh, and we have to put in the hotels. We got to put in the little homes. So let's use some black marker and put in some um, homes in our cactus. I almost forgot one of the most important things. They can be different sizes. Even these little ones here will get some little homes. All right, and then we'll put. Some where there were some, even this guy, even though he fell over, he had little homes in them. All right, so there is our illustration based off of our book, Cactus Hotel. Uh, and I look forward to seeing, uh, seeing you guys next time. Let me stop sharing. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye.